Puppies at play while the world falls apart. Enjoy! At least you get to watch something peaceful while you watch the world go to literally shit in front of your eyes. Puppies at play way. Anything else is false to fall. Why do I want to hide over there? See, I'm messing everything up by hiding. state and then you'll be very suggestible to everything we say after that. We'll also be terrorizing you with updates on President fully protected Biden contracting COVID, the climate emergency, and how the World Economic Forum wants to block out the sun. Seriously. But first, let's start with the definitely not created in a lab this time, monkeypox. The World Health Organization has declared monkeypox a public health emergency. And the public has declared the World Health Organization a public health emergency. But the public doesn't control the narrative, so who cares? Here's what the head of the World Health Organization and Chinese Communist Party official Tedros something or other had to say. I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. Scary, I know, but it gets scarier. Now, who is being most affected by this hilarious sounding virus? Well, Dr. Peter McCullough, citing the New England Journal of Medicine, which does not sound very gay people, to us, shares that those who are infected by the dreaded global monkeypox emergency are 98% are gay or bisexual, 41% have concurrent HIV, and 95% of cases have been transmitted via sexual activity. And that's resulted in a staggering zero deaths. What a global pandemic! Um, can you cancel my weekend plans? Just tell the fellas something came up. As you can see, this is a public health emergency that affects us all. Your obedience to everything we tell you now and moving forward is the only way to protect yourself. However, there are those who suffer from a deficiency in obedience who are saying another public health emergency that gives authoritarians complete control over our lives? This is like the boy who cried wolf. Well, it's actually not like that at all. Because in that fairy tale, the boy who cried wolf was not a wolf himself. 
So this is very different. And in other news, President Brandon announced that he has COVID. Take a look. There's, you're okay. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Oops, that's not the right clip. Hey folks, guess you heard this morning I tested positive for COVID. Oh, and that that's not your head, yes, he yeah. reports that Joe Biden calls Obama to wish him a speedy recovery after hearing the president has COVID. With Hunter's dad being sick, one would expect the border problem, inflation, and food shortages that have been plaguing our country to start improving if the president's not working. But luckily, Brandon continues to work, even while having the dreaded infection. How is he doing that? Well, the White House doctor says, with all the problems the president is suffering from, this infection is the least of his concerns, and he probably won't even notice it. But the president is facing some criticism for continuing to work, as the woke will always cannibalize their own, Yale medical professor Kim Su has accused Biden of being a white supremacist for continuing what? to work while he has COVID. The university professor, who is someone you pay lots of They're money to to your children, said in a tweet, POTUS working while having COVID infection epitomizes white supremacy urgency in the workplace. But the White House responded by saying, that's not the thing that proves Biden's a white supremacist. However, Kim Su is someone who should be taken very seriously, given that the credentials of her pronouns are listed in her Twitter bio. We can also tell she is a principled person, unafraid to stick up for the truth that she stands for as she prevents unapproved people from following her account. And while we're on the topic, Unfortunately, Paul Duncan, a 35-year-old former NFL and Notre Dame lineman, has died after going into cardiac arrest while jogging around his neighborhood. After a string of similar deaths, there's no word yet on what caused him to go into cardiac arrest, but it was probably old age. Case closed. There will be no further comments on the matter. Moving along. If one virus doesn't kill you, then another will. And if that unfortunately still doesn't kill you, then the weather will. The climate crisis is here and it's real. That's why our narrative is chalked so full of it. And there's no need to worry because we want you to panic. And on the matter, President Biden recently announced climate change programs, but consumers of propaganda are disappointed that he's yet to declare a climate emergency. And for those who are concerned that professional cyclist Joe Biden has yet to declare a climate emergency, don't worry, because that's on the next page in the playbook. What Let's about the assault The bikes? climate emergency will help Americans have less food and more poverty while believing they're protected against the weather as they're living in despair. For more on this, don't check out the full breakdown on this video on the JP Reacts channel, linked in the description. To better understand the climate crisis and how it works, take a look at these weather update photos that prove how drastically the globe is warming. The top one is from June 21st, 2017, and the bottom one, with lower temperatures but featuring the color red, is from June 21st of this year. So as you can see, the colors we're now using on lower temperatures are much scarier looking. But is there anyone who can help us defeat the climate crisis? Yes! Oddly enough, the same people who create the narrative on it and go to painstaking measures to get it in front of you every chance they get also have a solution on it. It's our good friends and trusted allies at the World Economic Forum. The unelected reptiles at the World Economic Forum are pushing to block out the sun in an effort to defeat humanity in the name of the climate emergency. They're advocating for the use of space bubbles to block out some of the sun's rays. What could go wrong giving Klaus Schwab control over your ability to receive the life-giving light from the sun? Nothing because Klaus Schwab himself reassures the public that there should be no risk. Sounds like a good thing to take at face value. You shouldn't worry about the risk if something goes wrong with his scheme to block out the sun. Should probably worry about the risk of it going according to plan. Hey, look at the weather in Antarctica today. We've gotta do something about this. In our final story tonight, the Gateway Pundit reports that the city of Kalamazoo, Michigan is decriminalizing public urination, defecation, and littering for 
equity. And if you think about it, that implies that they think people of color are degenerate enough to want to pee and poop on sidewalks. And that's definitely not a racist perspective they have in their effort to destroy their city under the leadership of leftist Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Observational reports show that Governor Whitmer has an approximate IQ of 47 which Michigan leftists are proud of as it helps create equity for dumb people. That's it for tonight's news. Monkeypox is here, so don't do gay orgies quite as much. And please pray for President Brandon's recovery, but also be an atheist. And there's sun on the horizon for you with Klaus Schwab's dark cloud in the sky. Hmm, he's so literal with that. Fuck your freedom. Good night. Good, good, JP. Bringing you the truth. It's a pill that's shaped oddly with a thousand points. Boy, it goes down hard. Enjoy. This is my favorite. My daughter identifies as a lizard, so I want a heat rock in the classroom. Nope. Oh, someone? Hello? Hi. Hi, uh, so my name's Alex Stein. I live at 69 Waverly. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your last name? Stein, S-T-E-I-N. Okay, thank you. And the reason why I'm uh, calling in, I just saw another district now is providing litter boxes for a student that identifies as a cat. And my daughter, Lily, identifies as a lizard. And everybody's getting so mad because I want to put a terrarium in the classroom. They're looking at me like I'm crazy. I understand we're not going to put the temperature at 85 degrees like the other students would not like that. But a small accommodation like a terrarium for my daughter would be very simple, very a very simple thing to do. We look at other districts that are going out. Think about what we do for the special lessons. Excuse me, Mr. Stein. Excuse me. Yes. Um, if you have an individual request for your child, that's something that you could um, call the, the, the school or the so superintendent with. It's, it's a district request because I shouldn't have to, the whole district should accommodate her because it's teachers, it's a lot of people won't even uh, respect her, um, what she identifies as. That's, that's the, it's a whole district issue. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not, it's not an individual thing, it's a whole issue with the district. Is that, yes, I understand, I don't like that my daughter identifies as a lizard. I try to tell her not to, it's the worst thing ever. Mr. Stein, well, I'll, I will have Dr. Dr. Villanueva will will get will but reach out to you. That's the problem though. When you guys don't support it, you won't put the trailer in there. The more you kick back with a young girl like that, you know she's going to kick back even harder. And that's the problem. That's why the on the district. Listen, okay. I get it. We're, the teacher, we're not going to put the temperature at 85 degrees. Really. Thank you. Just a simple glass box. For her Thank you, Mr. Stein. And Dr. Villanueva will reach out to you. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Mr. For that Stein, request. just for Thank student you. confidentiality, I'll reach out to you individually. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else from the virtual audience that would like to address the board this evening? He deserves an aquarium for his daughter. Equal rights, man. My goodness. Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Oh man, you know the Biden administration is getting in some serious trouble with their messaging. If even the left-wing White House press correspondents are hammering them, and man, today was an incredibly embarrassing moment for Kareem John Keir, and the rest of these White House goons, even Joe Biden who appeared remotely, every single one of them getting grilled about the definition of recession, and while leftists do what leftists they do- They change the definition. The Fit, then redefine the term. Of course, we know when it comes to basic biology and the definition of a man and a woman doesn't exactly fit Recession the rest of the narrative. Is the so definition what do of a do? woman. Well, they redefine the term entirely. We've seen them do this many times. And now, apparently, the Biden White House is trying to do that exact same thing, redefine what a technical recession means as they continue to cope, continue to deny reality, because they know what we've known for a while, what I've been reporting on for a while, we already are 
are in a recession. And the way they're acting right now in such denial, well, I'd say it probably confirms that they probably have the inside scoop that Thursday's GDP report isn't going to be so hot. And they're already preparing to shift their messaging and to flat out lie to try to save face as much as possible. Let's continue to analyze the absolutely abysmal messaging coming out of this White House. We got some stuff to get into, folks. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So take a look at the copium. And it's not even just copium. It's incoherent copium. Next week's a very big week for the economy. So I read the CEBA blog. Is the White House trying to change the common definition of a recession? Because next Thursday, the GDP numbers coming out are going to show that we've been in recession. So let me say this, you know, the strength of our labor market along with the other economic uh, factors is what, what we generally see in a recession or even a pre, a pre, what is not what we generally see in a recession or even a pre-recession because we're seeing the strength of the economy and the labor market. So that's really important uh, to note that there because those are uh, key elements as we talk about that, as folks keep asking us about that. So Americans across the country are back to work. Uh, at a historic level. Uh, the summation of what she said is something akin to this. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so? But this is actually the stance that they're taking. We know the technical definition of recession. We know what it looks like. It's been declared in the exact same way for decades. But with the Biden administration, they're actually trying to play this angle. Take a look at this from Biden advisor Gene Sperling. You know, the discussion over the weekend, uh, Janet Yellen sort of saying, well, if you have two quarters of contracting GDP growth, not necessarily a recession, um, I covered the economy for, for many years. I was told by everybody I spoke to uh, that, that two negative quarters, two contracting quarters, means that the economy is in a recession. Do you believe that? Is that what you ascribe to? Uh, that is not the actual definition of a recession. It is a significant contractionary period over a few months. They are actually denying the technical depth. Of course they are, just like science. Science can't be questioned. Science is all about questioning. Stress and trauma. Science don't work on percentages. Get peace of mind with our CarMax 30-day money-back guarantee, giving you time to make sure you've made the right choice. CarMax, car buying, reimagine. See minions, the rise of growth, only in theater city PG. It's more crucial than ever to keep an eye out on potential cyber risks. The CyberStrong platform provides the most automated way to manage cybersecurity risk while allowing you to meet continuous compliance thanks to a holistic, intuitive solution that keeps everyone in the know. Full definition of a recession because they're hoping to avoid the inevitable, which is the Biden recession. Of course, they don't want that before the midterms, but they don't want that at all. And so instead of face reality, they're delusional and living on another planet. The Biden administration says, well, no, that's not really the definition of a recession. Really, two consecutive quarters of GDP contraction isn't the definition of a recession. Well, then where does this come from? Thursday, that first reading of second quarter GDP, there's a possibility this is a negative number two consecutive quarters of, of negative growth the definition of a recession is a decline in output for two consecutive quarters or about six months a recession is just two consecutive quarters of economic decline when we talk about the possibility of a recession what is a recession a recession is two consecutive quarters two consecutive quarters two consecutive quarters two consecutive quarters, two consecutive quarters of declining GDP because as you know it's two consecutive quarters of down GDP. That signals, it is actually a definition of a recession. I mean, the most common definition of a recession, two consecutive quarters of negative growth. Even if we don't have two consecutive quarters of negative growth, we might have one quarter of growth so deep that it's classified as a recession. Denial, denial, denial. And of course, it's all over the White House. Biden was questioned as well, and take a look what he said here. And Mr. President, we're getting GDP numbers on Thursday. How worried should Americans be that we could be in a recession. We're not going to be in a recession, uh, in my view. Uh, we uh, The employment rate is still one of the lowest we've had in history. It's in the 3.6 area. Uh, we still find ourselves with people investing. Uh, my, my hope is we go from this rapid growth to a steady growth. And uh, so see, we'll see some coming down. But I don't think we're going to uh, 
God willing, I don't think we're going to see a recession. We're not going to be in a recession. They're saying this when most likely the data that they have access to behind the scenes is confirming a recession. Why else would they be trying to change the definition of a recession? It doesn't make any sense at all. Clearly, they're trying to get ahead of Thursday's report and just take a look at how far they're going. This is an actual post from WhiteHouse.gov. What is a recession? While some maintain that two consecutive quarters of falling real GDP constitutes a recession, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. Instead, both official determinations of recession and economists' assessment of economic activity are based hey. on a holistic look at the data, including the labor market, consumer, and business spending, industrial production, and incomes. Based on these data, it is unlikely that the decline in GDP in the first quarter of this year, even if followed by another GDP decline in the second quarter, indicates a recession. And now I'm going to put my money down that this statement right over here is going to age like old milk, especially because their defense isn't even really all that solid. They're claiming that the labor market, consumer markets, business spending, industrial production, and incomes are going to carry the economy through, but the labor market from what we're seeing is possibly taking a hit. The consumer is definitely not in good shape. Consumer confidence is at the lowest it's ever been, and we're possibly entering an earnings recession. We're going to have to see some of the financial statements that are released this week and just going forward, especially in the next quarter. Industrial production is down as well, and real incomes in relation to inflation are also down. The reality is we're not going to see the true impacts of two quarters of negative GDP probably till the third quarter or at least the winter heading into 2023. Are we in a recession? Probably. Are they going to announce the recession right now? No, probably not. Probably in the winter. So I guess technically we're not in a real recession, but we pretty much are. These people are full of sh excuse my French, and everything they're claiming as indicating that the economy is incredibly strong is very, very misleading. In fact, everything about this administration is misleading. I want to say that Joe Biden's the one that's doing the misleading, but Joe Biden, of course, is just the puppet. I don't think any of this has anything to do with Biden, not to give him an escape or an excuse or anything, but of course we know he's just an empty shell of his former self. The guy's not all there and he's just a vessel for the real shadowy figures behind him actually running the show, and his Twitter feed is one of the biggest disasters ever. Take a look at some of these tweets. So out of touch, it's not even funny. Gas prices have declined by an average of 60 cents per gallon over the past 38 days. Five straight weeks of gas prices coming down. He then updates that, or rather his staffers update that. Make that 65 cents down over 40 days. Whoa, 65 cents from a high of $5 a gallon. The administration then releases this tweet, which is getting slammed on Twitter. Four American families looking for a little bit more breathing room. Get ready for this breathing room, folks. At current prices, the average driver will spend $35 less per month for one person. They couldn't even bother to spell check and write person. Or $70 less per month for a family with two cars than they would if gas prices stayed at their peak. I mean, is that some massive victory? Americans are still paying based on economic data that we've covered anywhere from three to $5,000 more a year, not only on gas prices, but on everything while making less money. And Joe Biden is taking a victory lap because you're spending $35 less a month. Based on the previous peak, what he's essentially saying is, well, at least things aren't bad as they were when they were worst case scenario a month ago. Not to mention, he's taking a victory lap for what? A slowing down economy? I mean, pretending as if gas prices are going down because of his actions is a complete farce. What's really happening is demand destruction. What's really happening is the economy is slowing down. People are just unable to afford moving around. People are taking their... You're out ruining your space. But your credit has you stuck in a tight spot. The tight spots never stopped you before. Like when you worked weekends, Valley Park and Limos to pay big city rent. But unlocking a better score, you need the right keys. With Credit Karma, you can check your credit scores for free and get personalized advice to help you raise it, giving you space to raise something more important. Get the money app where your hard work pays off and create your own karma, Credit Karma.
Hello and welcome to today. Head outside. With flip flops, pajama pants, and no shirt, this veteran went to war to protect his wife who was hiding inside. Oh, lads. Clean up on aisle this dude's front lawn because he just started blasting these Democrat voters who thought that they could just break into his house, steal his BMW, and everything would be fine. No, no, you ran into a mad lad. You ran into a vet. This dude, the fucking Afghanis couldn't kill this son of a bitch. You ain't stealing his BMW. He didn't go to Afghanistan so Democrat shitholes could steal his BMW. No, he come out a blazing. With an AR-15. What you need an AR-15 for? Because of that. Because what you idiots have done. What you Democrat Seven communist sons of good. bitches have done to all of these areas. This dude goes out there to fight Afghanistan and comes back and realizes that the Democrats have set this country on fire. And they're trying to unleash their meth head foot soldiers. That's what all these people want. This is why they don't arrest anybody. They want criminals running free. They want it to be open season on citizens. They're trying to keep you in a frantic state. They're trying to boil you like a frog. They're trying to induce crime around you. And they're trying to keep you quiet and shut the fuck up and locked in your house. Or else they'll send their foot soldiers in your direction. Well, you sent them in the direction of a dude who's got an AR-15. And he unloaded on your fucking vanguard of criminality over here. Again, this is why they want you disarmed. What do you need an AR-15 for? Because there's a lot of them. There's, there's a lot of them. This is uh, three people breaking into this dude's house over here. right? They're, they're trying to steal his car. And they're armed. Oh my god, so nobody needs an AR-15. But that's a weapon of war! With a weapon of war! You've turned these neighborhoods into war zones. You did this, by the way. With your George Soros attorney generals, your George Soros district attorneys, your George Soros sheriffs, your George Soros, we ain't arresting anybody. You turned these neighborhoods into war zones by not arresting criminals. Go fuck yourself. Do you need a gun for? Need lots of guns. Don't give up your guns. Do not give up. Do not seize your guns. This isn't Georgia, so this dude will be fine. If it was in California, they'd arrest him. All the people trying to break into his car, uh, who were armed, by the way, shooting at the dude, all of those dudes would be not charged. He would be charged, even though he's black. See how that works. To all you dumb left hearts out there who are buying into this woke nonsense, if you're a black conservative, if you're a black person standing up for yourself against the Democrat foot soldiers, they'll arrest you. You can be a gay black dude. They don't care. All right? You're not allowed to defend yourself. Defending yourself against them is the problem. Letting your entire neighborhood burn down, that's the point from leftism. And these, these idiots that go, well, that's just one, that's just one instance. Just one instance. Oh my god, this guy's every day are killing David Hogg and raping AOC. I don't think that's at all how that works. But, uh, no. This happens all the time. Even the CDC, I think. I, the CDC, way into your guns, but... Treat HIV. It's every other month in Jackson. Got a bullet in the face! Undetect- Super AIDS is seriously spreading now. Hey guys, welcome People to the their Broad Mind, really. we focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, there's a lot of chatter lately about Joe Biden's position in the Democrat Party. We've been covering all of the stories of Democrats publicly telling him that he should step down and not run in 2024. I mean, they're done with the guy. But the question that I we have for Democrats is, it's kind of like that old head. saying, you know, you made your bed, now you got to sleep Would in you? it. The bed is Joe Biden. And what I think these short-sighted Democrats don't realize is that they have no other option. Not only is it a bad idea to challenge your incumbent or to get rid of the electoral advantage that is incumbency, but what are your options? Right now, the only option that Democrats have, the only real option, is Kamala Harris. Or, of course, Hillary Clinton. But more realistically, Kamala Harris. She is at the top of all primary polls. The second name that we always hear is Pete Buttigieg. But he's honestly not even close. The number two clear winner, clear option for the Democrats is Kamala Harris. 
and we already know how much of a blunder that would be. We know where the numbers are at in terms of hypothetical matchups 2024, Kamala Harris losing to Donald Trump by over 10 points on the average. Of course, because not only does Kamala Harris have a terrible track record as a politician before she became vice president of the United States, but she's also the least popular vice president and the biggest disaster to ever occupy that VP role. And let's add another list of embarrassments for Kamala Harris. Get this folks, another PR blunder for the VP. Kamala Harris was putting together a fundraising event and she had to cancel it because she just wasn't selling any tickets. And this is the Democrats' bright future, next rising star, vice president of the United States, second most popular Democrat, can't even put a basic fundraising event together. Folks, we have got some stuff to get into. Let's roll the tape. Take a look at this headline right over here. Ouch. Kamala Harris event canceled after low ticket sales. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are two of the most unpopular politicians in the United States, and if anyone needed more proof, we have it. A DNC Women's Leadership Forum fundraiser featuring Vice President Kamala Harris has had to be postponed as ticket sales were slow, status quo news reports. The event was rescheduled last minute for the autumn, when the event is traditionally held, after the event couldn't sell enough tickets, it said. When the invites were sent out on May 5th, it was hyped as an incredible opportunity to mingle in person after two years of virtual events and meetings. Ticket prices range from $250 to $50,000, according to the report, which is pretty typical for these fancy schmancy events with all of these billionaires looking to gain influence with influential politicians. DNC spokesperson Daniel Wessel is on record claiming that Kamala Harris is a huge draw for events, but did not give a reason why the event was rescheduled. Rumors are flying that some of President Joe Biden's allies have at least looked into the idea of replacing Vice President Kamala Harris. In a scathing piece from the New York Magazine titled, There Has to Be a Backup Plan, there's a backup plan, right? Inside the 2024 soul searching that's happening in every corner of the Democrat Party, author Gabriel Deba Dinetti discusses how Democrats are facing a reckoning. Deba Dinetti notes that there seems to be a major divide between Biden and his allies on one side and Harris and her loyalists on the other. Well, according to these ticket sales, it seems that like right has now. no loyalists. And even looking at her office, at her staff, the people that are closest to her, I mean, they have led like none other. The mass exodus of Kamala Harris. The really? only really original thing that remains is probably Kamala Harris's stapler. Everyone else from the original Come team here. has fled. It, with uh, Trumpism reascended, ambivalence about Biden's age and political standing is fueling skepticism, just as the image of his understudy, Vice President Kamala Harris, dips even further than his. The most recent analysis from the Los Angeles Times has her net of Approval rating at negative. Perfect job, guys. Good kennel.